on that note, yes, maybe all of our fucking all of our room, man. A little too much detail? Alright. Welcome to Game Day Battle with Cleveland Sports News Week's biased and outspoken opinion. We have most of the Game Day crew here. Uh, Ramon Torres. He uh, was not able to make it tonight, but these guys are, and they are, I guess, uh, biased and outspoken opinion. In yes, I am. Sports News. Is that what's going on? Yeah, Likely the Sports uh, News. Yeah. Tried to last week, it didn't work, and that, was, that wasn't very uh, apparent there, but I'm glad I can narrate. You did. Um, yeah. To my left is Dale Shantz Tercy. And he's a little weirded out. We got a new camera going tonight. Um, little, little, little new equipment. So I don't like change. He doesn't like change. So uh, we've got a little bit closer. It's a little bit different, but um, it'll be good. And to my right, Brett Finnegan, and well known for his monsters, his monsters uh, employment. He's no deep and, in the in the Lake Erie monster circles. Deep, deep. And you also uh, I got to uh, you tell us about the Z, the whole. Uh, the setup for the Z thing. It's, uh, it's top secret. Yeah, can't say anything top secret. It's top okay. secret. He might. He might leak out. Uh, can you? Or are you sworn to? Sworn. Mm -hmm. I think I can. I think I can beat you to death with the uh, hockey stick. Dan Gilbert. You never he's, know. Gonna, he's gonna have. Uh, he's gonna have. Brent <laughs> it is pretty sweet though. You can't see the. The cats they post a pic. Of the court. So previews are right. available. We'll show that then. Um, so we got a full show tonight. There is a lot going on. It's not exactly the prime sports time in Cleveland, unfortunately, right now. But the, the Cavs right now are just a few games out of, uh, the, of the playoffs, and there are a few dozen left. So really, what are the chances of them being a playoff team this year? And uh, the Browns, you think nothing's going on with them? There's always something going oh, on with them. Yes. Alex Mack who I think we can all agree is a very valuable lineman, uh, center. So um, he is actually unhappy with, with being here. And he hasn't said that directly, but he's implied that in every way possible. Talked about Cleveland in the past tense. They have now put a transition tag on him. So the question is, if we end up having to pay him higher than any other lineman, do we do it? And what is he worth, basically, at this point? Do you let him walk? If he doesn't want to be here, he's going to be too expensive, and we're just building anyway. Um, let's move on to the Indian spring training. Does it feel good to feel like spring yet? I smell baseball. Yeah. Rosin is in the air. It I is. I don't see spring anywhere, but... Yeah. Well, you won't see it's, it here, It's under but the snow. I got it right here, though. I, go, I, I think it's going to be like 45, Summer Sandies. 45 next week. Summer Sandies. Which is like a heat wave. Yeah. Well, I'll be out there in shorts then for that. Yep. Um, but if you turn the radio on, you get to listen to a little bit of the Indians talk. You get to hear, uh, you know, the, the announcers. You get to kind of that feel, you know, that feel mm -hmm. of summer, feel of spring. Baseball. And uh, it is back. The Indians right Dry now time. have uh, have a, a few exciting things going on this early. Uh, one of them is Lonnie Chisholm, who I know you guys all hate. I've been kind of a, a, a fan of Whoa, his. Whoa, you shouldn't say um, all here. Well, okay, it took a while to bring you around, but I, I got a lot of slack last year. Or a flack for uh, for touting the guy. Now, I'm he, he pretty sure that last year I was on the bandwagon line too. And all I think it was just us. Okay, two. okay. All right, maybe, maybe. Uh, I just was like definitely not on the line, Lonnie Chisholm. Hall you actually way. you started a slide for him after yeah. we went to a game. You were about 30 feet from him. And you got in his head. Yeah. And that was the end of it for him. He went back down to sliders. Uh, And everybody knows that that guy came out and, and, and just was smashing the ball for a while and then disappeared completely. Where'd he go? Uh, yeah, who knows? Ray? So he is also just knocking the cover off the ball in uh, the short spring, uh, spring training we've had so far. What would it take for you to put both of those guys, uh, one of those guys, each of them individually, what would it take for you to see in spring training to want to put them in a starting role? I'm not talking about starting right now and then, but like the man. What would it take? Obviously, they can't start at the same time. Obviously. But, um, I'm talking, what would it take individually for can we, them? Can we start two third basemen? Uh, we could just put them both out no, there and maybe can't. not have a second baseman. The answer, Mike, was no. That was a rhetorical no. <laughs> I gave, I gave, you, I gave I mean, you a love, though. It's really simple. Who do you start at third base? And that's the guy who can actually play defense. You know, let's not forget that baseball is, uh, there's two sides of that coin. Yeah, you may be able to hit, but can you play defense? And uh, Lonnie Chisenhall is just... One of the worst fielders that I think we have on our team. We saw that up close and personal. And of course, everybody makes a good play here and there. But overall, I like I like Rayburn's defense. Uh, you know, a lot better. 
and I think his potential with the bat is uh, slightly above average compared to Lonnie as well. So what would you have to see from Lonnie in spring training? Some defense. Show me some, uh, you know. What? Like, do you want to see like 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 nice. highlight plays, or are you just saying yeah. don't let me see the ball get through your legs? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, step it up. <laughs> well, um, as we got to tell him, defense is not an option. What do they call those when they make the the sweet uh, glove plays? Gold glove, golden no, glove plays. No, no. Uh, highlights, top ten. Nothing. They don't call them nothing. nothing. They do nothing. not call them. It'll nothing. come to me, and I will shout it out at a random. <laughs> Time and yeah. spot in Haiti that you will not be able to detect. <laughs> I like it. So web, web gem, web gem. Thank you, web gem, web gem. Yeah, Thank you, ESPN, for the programming. Well, so you want to see some web gems from Lonnie Chisenhall? Yes, I do. To, okay, all right. We and all know what he can do with a bat, but is, can he be consistent? Can we have a can we have a batter on this team that can give us three hundred? Uh, well, Chisenhall is actually batting three hundred for the last like Bullshit. month of the season. Like no, he actually did. He did. I mean, all right, was, all right, a month. So you bet it for a month. All right, so I want some consist consistency at third base. Consistency, and, then, and you want and you want some fielding. All right, I, I don't I don't mind rotating them back and forth. Obviously, they're both going to get some spot starts here and there. But overall, I feel you know Rayburn is. We're waiting for him to produce. You know, we, he's still part of that Victor Martinez trade, and we're still waiting to see some dividends from that. We've seen flashes, but can we see it consistently? Can we have? You know, uh, a solid baseball player on both sides of the ball. All right. Well, um, do you share the, the same uh, same feeling about Chisenhall? You need to see some stuff in the field. Uh, I don't think so. I think he's he's an okay player, but I think Rayburn should get to start only because he's a veteran. He he has proved himself. Uh, there are times where you have a bad game and all that, but um, the games in the a row. Games. Uh, but I think at this point, if you Especially if you sign the guy halfway through the season to an extension, you're going to have to give that guy the starting nod, you know, as Rayburn signed last right. year. And uh, don't forget, there's all rumors around where in the Dominican Republic, Carlos Santana is playing third base down there. So he's making a transition going from catcher to first to third. So there could be some other mix-ups going on here. Okay, all right. The Indians are denying it. But they they come out and say that he's been. Then we playing. get Gomes behind the plate. Yeah, who's yeah. or Gomes. first? Who's the next? Who's the next big first base? What are you talking well, about? We saw Lottie Swisher. at first. We saw Swisher. <laughs> well, if you said you want a defensive player, yeah. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I um, want a defensive guy at first for sure. Yeah, you saw Swisher there. I mean, you also have uh, Murphy, who we signed this year, that could uh, definitely play um, some infield too. He's a more of an outfielder, and also uh, I was talking to you earlier today. We also have we signed Jeff Francoeur. Mm -hmm. To a uh, minor league contract, so to an invite for spring training, and he can also play the infield. He's also played for the Braves, the uh, Royals, the uh, everyone, <laughs> pretty much. But he can also play the infield too. So if you look at it that way, we could have a pretty good standard, you know, team here. Sounds like some depth, potentially mm -hmm. some depth. And I think getting getting a lot of consistency out of both Rayburn and Chisenhall is the key for both of them. Mm -hmm. That was the one thing that really frustrated all of us with both of them. It's hard to when you when you get sort of on a on a, uh, a bandwagon and guys like smashing the ball. Uh, Chisinau had that month of three hundred, and then for him to drop off so dramatically, mm -hmm. some a bad stretch, you know, some bad games, maybe a bad couple of weeks, whatever. But um, to go a month of of really really being miserable that hurts the team. That hurts the mm -hmm. team a lot. So I don't want to I want to see consistency. I don't even need to see three hundred from uh, from each of them. I'd like it, but if we can get two fifty two seventy five. 280 and get it consistently, then I'm happy with the third base position there. Um, I'm okay with Chisinau falling off and then Rayburn coming up. And oh, then, do, you can, do you get tied like that? Yeah. yeah hey, I think it's tied in that way. I, I'll be okay with that, but that doesn't ever get happen. the best of both. Yeah. I, I think they're both seasoned enough at this point that you could pretty much put them on a short leash. It, you know, a young guy, mm -hmm. you, you got to watch that because you can totally screw his head up if he thinks one bad play and he loses his starting role. Yep. Mm -hmm. But you know, you, you get you get a little bit of experience under you. Both of them already played in, in adverse situations. Now you say, look, you are earning your next start every game you play. I bet you get a lot out of each of them. And, uh, and when they do get the, the, the chance to get back in there, you know, when the other ones sort of falling off, then you might get that first out of each of them because they uh, kind of rise and fall. So.
prospects. We've got a lot of good people that are coming in to sort of round this team out. We had some really good talent at the top. Didn't have a whole lot of depth. That was one thing that really hurt us, especially late last year. So we might see that. One thing that we really need is starting pitching. And we all know who we love, and that's Justin Masterson. Mm -hmm. um, he's on paper for this year. That's not a problem, but it ends, and he goes into free agency next year. We want to sign him now to avoid the whole free agency talk all year long. As we do here and, in Cleveland. And right, and what is going to happen when he hits the free agent market and probably get a lot of money. He and the Indians are now talking about a very fair, yeah. uh, I think, 40 to $60 million deal, three to four years. Um, four, four, okay. Is that about right? Four or five? Three or four? No, three or four, four years. Eight, three or four. Three or four. four so, eight, 60. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a very fair deal. It's a lot of money, mm -hmm. but it's a very fair deal. The question is, if he walks away from the table and he wants to be the highest paid pitcher in baseball or damn close to it, and he wants a long deal, six, eight year deal, do you think it's a good move? I know he's worth it, but do you think it's a good move for the, for the Indians to make at this point, given the fact that we've already got a lot of good pieces in place and we could find ourselves strapped for cash? Actually, I, I do believe that... Um Justin Madison actually went to the Indians and asked for a three to four year deal worth forty to sixty million. It's on the table towards the Indians. It's the Indians that are now staggering, figuring out if they want to pay him that much. Because that also comes up to the point where the Reds also signed Homer Bailey to a similar contract. Exactly. Which is a little bit higher, but it is taking the last years but more money. No no no, it's six years. And that's that for in, ba for Bailey. Bailey, yeah. yeah. Homer and Bailey got a six year forty six million year, million no, hundred and five million dollars. Hundred and five million dollars. So, and, mm -hmm. and that's what I was going to, to, to throw out there, um, was that that's what changed it. He offered that before the Homo Barely deal came in. Mm -hmm. Now, there's no offer. Now, it's just they're talking. He yeah. could walk away at this point mm -hmm. and say, well, wait, I didn't know that's what pitchers can get at this point. Mm -hmm. So, he could demand six years, $105 million from the Indians, and we may end up having him say, I could get more than that next year in the free agent market. Let's do eight years and you know, up 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 the uh, the money accordingly. That's where I'm getting at. If he if he demands to be one of the highest pitchers in baseball, highest paid pitchers in baseball, and he wants a six or eight year deal, is that a good move? Absolutely. You think so? Absolutely. It. I mean, we. It's like walking down memory lane because we've done this before. Right. And then once we're like, oh, you know what? We've done a little overboard. Let's go ahead and trade him off anyways. But absolutely, you want to ink that starting pitcher because. He's been here. He's a veteran, especially for the younger guys like uh, Salazar and all them. People look up to him. You know, being the number one pitcher, you have to keep him there. It's consistency. Do you, do you think this team with him on it is a World Series contender? Absolutely. Okay. Without him, we're, we've already lost Casimir, Kluber, uh, Yabaldo. That's three of our main five pitches that we had. Ugh. Yeah. All ten, ten, ten game winners, too. Mm hmm. So you have to sign. I mean, you. Your hands are tied. You're going to sign the guy if you plan on going to your unfinished business. All right, all right. It's tough to say that they would be a, a World Series team because, you know, we've had them on our team for four years now, so um, not much of a World Series run. But well, what I, what I mean that, by that is do you think that he makes that much of a difference? I, I mean, absolutely, without okay. a doubt. I mean, you're basically buying 20 wins. How much is 20 wins worth to you? Mm -hmm. You know, is, that, is it worth $12 million a year? Is it worth eleven? I, I think the fact that you got uh, an all-star player, a blue chip player that's coming to you and requesting an extension for less money than than what's going on out there. Um, I mean, you ha how do you not jump on that? Like he said, especially with our history here in Cleveland, we know how shit goes down here. You got a guy that wants to play. Let's get him inked. Let's get him signed. He is definitely mm -hmm. top five, top eight pitchers in the league right now. So I definitely think you jump on him without a doubt. Well, and lock him up. And do you, what if he walks away? If he says he, he's walking away, unless he can get eight years, six years, and you know, one hundred and fifty million dollars or something, that's going to be a large amount of money and a big hit on the cap. Are you still in? I'm still in. Right. I'm still in because because a four year, sixty million dollar deal in baseball, relatively, is not a barn breaking deal. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like they're burning down the house to keep him. I think that that's a that's a pretty solid deal for uh, an ace for a major league baseball ace. And that's what he is. He's a guy that can get you uh, 250 strikeouts a year. He can actually take over a game, pitch that complete game, shut out, 
and that's something that we can't get from any of our other pitchers. Is uh, you know just a dominant guy to to go out there and just battle for us and give us nine innings uh, in back-to-back -back starts. I hear you, and I actually agree with both of you. Um, if Homer Bailey can get 105 million in six years, Masterson should get at least that, and at I least. almost think it's an insult not to offer him that. If he's willing, if he's still willing to, to take the deal, the three to four year deal, then do it because it is going to be so Done. expensive next year. If he stays healthy this year. Pitches another going to be 20 games. Oh, yeah. Wins another gold and, glove. And well, here, here's, here's, well, one thing I'll, I'll say, you know, he's, 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 he's a, he gives us 20 games. He actually probably makes a difference in probably about 10 because you could probably get a 10-game winner somewhere. But those 10 games are important, especially when you add on to those 10 games um, a few playoff wins and the guy that's going to go against the ace on the other team in the big playoff games or in the uh, in the World Series. and. You gotta have a guy like that. You just have to have him, and if he's willing to do it for cheap, I, there's not any question. It's like, they should have just they should have walked the table and said that with their pens in hand and just sign, sign, sign. All right, so I'm gonna start it off here. Give you guys a little bit of a chance, a little bit of a breather. Um, First off, we still need some work at the linebacker position. Of course, we've tried to transition some guys from defensive end to linebacker. We've got the 3-4 uh, the three four system. I don't know if that's going to continue, actually, at this point. Anything could happen. But let's just assume we're sticking with the system we've got. We need to plug in some guys that can be kind of the tweener, they call them. You know, the guy that can, that can put his hand down, can, can step back, can cover uh, passes, that kind of thing. Michael Johnson, Cincinnati Bengals. He's a, he's a really good player. He's not a great player, but he's a really good player. We picked up Frosty Rucker from them a while ago, who was a decent player. If you want Frosty Rucker, Michael Johnson will walk all over Frosty Rucker. And um, a good pickup, probably wouldn't be too expensive. And he is a defensive end who is very, very athletic. Not a big, huge guy, but really strong and really fast. And that's what you want at a linebacker position when you've got four linebackers out there. He's, he's quick enough to, to cover and pass. Uh, defense, and he can also block the run and get after the passer. So uh, he's he's a good pickup. Uh, I'd like to see a tight end, and I think Dennis Pitta from the Baltimore Ravens is a good grab there. Probably won't be too expensive, and also a guy that can catch the ball. He does some blocking. I think he's a good all-around tight end. That's absurd. You, why is that absurd? Because Dale? we have Jordan Cameron. What are we, what are we doing? And with Dennis, Dennis Pitta. Pitta. Are we trying to run the two tight end. Are we new? Are we the fucking Patriots over here? I'm three tight ends if we can. Oh. Come on, three tight, two tight ends. You can have one hang back and block. One All the holes the we got to fill. You're worried about backup tight end. Look, Mike, look, we have got pull somebody else off that list. We're gonna rewind. I was this. gonna say Anquan Bolden, <laughs> but I think Bolden did sign a two-year extension. I think with, yeah, uh, Bolden already signed, and I don't think we, he would have signed here anyway. He has a lot of, in the way of options. I think these are two guys that would sign here. Just pick anybody and, besides Pitta. I think Pitt, Pitt is a good a good <laughs> shot. I think Pitt, Pitt could happen. And uh, I think he would help us out here. How about we sign T.J. Ward? Ooh, I mean, come on. That guy yeah. from that Browns team? Let's just yeah. sign that guy. Ooh, Ooh, I like what you did. I like what you did there. So, Dale? It's a tough uh, scenario with T.J. Ward, though, you know. Um, he, he wants about, you know, everybody's been talking about this Jarius Bird. And if you look at this free agent list, who's number one on that list? Yep, Jarius Bird. Jarius Bird, who comes from the Buffalo defense that we just hired our head coach from. So, yep. got to love a guy who loves ties like that. Would I, would I like to see a signed T.J. Ward? Absolutely. I, I'm tired of watching us lose big-name players. Um, but to be able to possibly lose Ward and get Bird for less money... It's, it's the correct business decision to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, either way, if we end up with either of those two guys, I think that's win-win. But I would definitely like to see T.J. Ward sign and have him stick around in Cleveland. Um, two guys that I'm looking at, number one, the biggest hole on our team, I feel, is without a doubt our running back. Uh, mm -hmm. We started a guy named Fonzie Whitaker last year for <laughs> most of the games. We got... Uh, we Was got, it Fonzie we, or Fozzie? Fozzie. 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 The Fonz would have been better. I would have, uh, I would have taken that. Uh, um, we got, what is it, Deion Jordan? or who, Who's uh, our young guy that got injured last year? We're waiting to see if he can come back healthy. Nobody knows. Name? Doesn't matter. Shot, sign, no Sean Marino, without a doubt. Uh, he's only been in the league for four years. 2009 draft pick. Just tearing it up uh, for Denver. 
And they're talking about Monty Ball being the starter there next year. It's, yeah. a, it's absolutely absurd. They, they're they they're heavy at the running back position, and if they're willing to let Noshawn Marino go to free agency, then I think we just found our workhorse back that can do it all. He can he can run for tough yards. He can he can block. He's a receiving threat. But a workhorse at 50 years old? 50 years old? He's, so an, old, he's an older guy. fourth year in the league. No, he's been like five or six. 2009 and he's he was a, drafted. And he's a running back. 2009. And he's, he's a, a running, running back. back. And his injuries were in his early stages of a career. Last year was the first year he played a full season. So who knows? He, maybe did, well. he, he did very well. Extremely yeah. well. Almost 2,000 total yards. Led the league in touchdowns. Top five fantasy football player. Uh, you know, no Sean Moreno is the way to go. I don't like signing uh, free agent defensive players. I don't like paying all that money for a defensive player because you don't know if they're products of the system they're in or if they're that good or maybe they were just playing next to guys that were better that that freed up the freed up some lanes for 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 that player to shine. Well, you were pretty happy last year when we grabbed uh who did we grab last year from Baltimore um uh, oh, come on. Uh oh, linebacker yeah, yeah. Kruger. 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 Pretty happy about him even though we overpaid a little we bit. We did overpay, uh, but what did, what did we also say about Kruger when we made that move? Man, he had an awesome playoff run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's but true. he did nothing nothing over the top during the regular season. He wasn't even a starter prior he, to the playoffs. He was yeah. not. So what do we learn paying ninety million to those three guys? You know, what was that the difference maker for us last year? I don't think so. You spend defense. free agent money on playmakers that are proven offensive <laughs> weapons that are going to help you put points on the board. And I think that Noshan Marino is definitely that. I think he's one of the best uh, running backs uh, available in free agency. Probably right up there with Ben Tate. You could probably take a gamble on either of those two guys. I wouldn't mind seeing either of them in uh, Browns jersey, but you could you could divulge on that uh, more. <laughs> uh, secondly, uh, the wide receiver position. We just we just cut Devon Bess. Uh, I think we've seen the best of Greg Little. Uh, who's going to be that number two wide receiver to complement Josh Gordon and really take our passing game to the next level? Are we going to draft Sammy Watkins? Could we sign a free agent wide receiver? I think that's probably our best bet. And you being a Giants fan, I'm looking right at Hakeem Nix, uh, the biggest hands in the league. Without a doubt, he could be. Uh, we could use him as a third down possession receiver. Uh, we don't need. We don't need break up, break out the top speed. We've got Josh Gordon for that. We just need that guy that's going to be a huge target for whoever's throwing the ball. And you can't lose when you got the biggest hands in the NFL. Uh, as your number two wide receiver spot. Now, he definitely had a down year last year, but uh, the whole entire New York offense had a down year last year, so he was a product of that shitty system and the shitty year that they had. But uh, Victor Cruz chased him out of town. I think he's going to be a bargain for whatever team he goes to. And before I throw it over to Brett, I'm going to steal one more. Uh -oh. One more. I don't want us to draft a quarterback. Uh, I think we have other needs, so I would rather see us, see us uh, sign a guy. Or possibly trade for a guy. Oh wow! Uh, I'm gonna throw out the rumor of the second round draft pick being uh, offered for Kirk Cousins. Uh, I don't. I don't see how you don't trade a, a second round pick. That's all right. We can still decide if we want to do that. I just wanted to bring it up and just put it out there. Look at what we look, look at what we gave up for Josh Gordon. A second round pick and a supplemental draft. Look at all the teams that would not give up a second round pick for a player of Josh Gordon's caliber. Do you think any of those teams would go back and give up that second round pick now? You think the Patriots would have given up a second mm -hmm. round pick to have a player like that? You're damn right they would. Fuck yeah. What is a second what is a second round pick? It's nothing. Give that up for Kirk Cousins, a guy who's coming from Kyle Shanahan's offense. He already knows the offense. He knows all of it. You could plug him in there, let him compete with Hoyer, give him a chance. He showed uh, a, ga a quality game and a half last year. Yeah. Let him compete, see if he's healthy. If not, you fall back on Cousins. Don't get caught up in, in this fucking Johnny Football bullshit and, and, and waste a pick on a quarterback that's just going to create more, more controversy. Now, if you can't move for Cousins, there's a quality free agent quarterback out there. I don't know if he's on anybody's list. But I like Josh McCown. Who Chicago. really shined in the Bears' offense last yeah, year? Brilliant. He was out playing Cutler. When Cutler came back, Cutler was underperforming. I don't know why they did not. They would have made the playoffs w without a doubt. Actually, I think they did make the playoffs. They would have made it farther in the playoffs if they would have rolled Josh McCown on that offense because he was just making Alshon Jeffrey look like a damn freak. 
and guys like Brandon Marshall, he was out there throwing for 400 yards, no interceptions, looking just totally comfortable out there, confident, and cheap. That's right folks, it's time for the two minute drill here on GDD. You ready? Yes. Well, what, is right. what is the two minute drill? What is the two minute drill? Tell us about you it. You know about so it? Confused. Maybe this is his first time watching. Little Billy. He's like, what? What's Little the two Billy, minute drill? Two minute drill is we have two minutes. We have five questions, five or more questions. Or more. Say, or more. We have two minutes to answer all questions to our best knowledge of yep. each question. Quickly. Very quickly. quickly. Briefly. But no yes, Mike, no answer. Mike answers. doesn't really do this really quickly, but we'll, hopefully we'll give him a, another try here. Well, hey, you know, I, I, I give you guys the he benefit likes to explain of many, many, many words. All right, you guys ready? Gonna happen. Three, two, one. All right, we kind of already touched on this already. Justin Mashin reportedly asked to try for a three or four year extension worth somewhere between 40 and 60 million. Sign or decline? My God, if Bailey's worth 105 million, sign Masterson, do it. Sign, him, sign him today. Done. Sign him tomorrow. Yesterday. Done. Deal. Yeah, Masterson. Just, just sign him. That's, try that's all you have to do. for life. Sign him all across the board. All right, number two. Tribe are seven one in spring play, a uh, seven game winning streak. This is a sign of unfinished business, or it's only spring training. Let's just wait till the season. Hey, they have a chip on their shoulder. Unfinished business. Win when it counts. Thanks, Thanks Tribe. All right, I I, I agree I with uh, Mike. It's a sign of unfinished <laughs> business. Is the bats are coming on? All right. All right, and it's a new. It's the start of a new season. It is. It is. And guess what's the top of the tox here? What? Chief Wahoo. Chief Wahoo, racist. Uh, Bigots. Uh, Primary logo has actually been wiped out from Chief Wahoo to the Black Sea now. It has um, been, officially. Wahoo will still be on some hats and apparel. Is it time to let Wahoo go, or please don't go, Chief Wahoo? Please don't go, my God, Chief Wahoo. I mean, come on, it, 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 it's this, it's like they're a war, we're like people and, and powerful and strong, and that's why we call ourselves the Indians. Go ahead. Yeah. Please don't go, Chief Wahoo. Stick around. You mean a lot to the city of Cleveland. People are, are going to bitch about something. They're always going to find something to bitch about. On to the next one. I say please stay because we actually named the team after Native American Indians baseball yeah, player. You should be honored. Yes. Reports coming that LeBron will be showing up at Big Z's retiring jersey uh, celebration. Yay or nay? Stay away, LeBron. Yeah. Stay away until you're coming back. You know what? Z wants you. I'm cool. All right. All right. Russell Wilson is now a Ranger. By the way, stay away. Ten seconds. Uh, Ranger and reported spring training. Is he going to be? A, is he the next Bo Jackson? Not at all. No, I would love to can't. see it. I would love to see it. It's nope. been ten years since we've seen him. this. Man, would you give up? Or him, uh, yeah. Uh, how about you? Him watch Russell it. Wilson. You like the idea of yeah, watching like the, the guy play, play twice? I do. I would like it better if he played for the Mariners. I think that would be just yeah, the greatest thing ever. Favorite. Yeah. Well, I, I think, you know, the question was, will he do well at it? Now, I like seeing it, but he, the guy is not going to be a great NFL quarterback coming up this year, the year after that. And to try to do two sports? And, oh, come on. Let me take it a step further for you. I guess we'll call this two-minute drill overtime. Ooh. Would you be surprised if Russell Wilson retired from the NFL and pursued a baseball career? You know, sometimes it's not all about the money. Sometimes it's about the goals that you set in life. And maybe his goal was to win a, an NFL Super Bowl. Yeah, and now it. he's done that. Yeah. So cross that off your list. Maybe he's like, you know, now I want to be the first athlete to win a... Uh, Super Bowl to, and World Series. Yeah, to win a championship in two sports. Yep. And we all know that baseball contracts dwarf NFL contracts. Yeah. I mean, you're playing 162 games. You're on the road every day, away from your family for months at a time. I mean, that's why those baseball players make the kind of money that they do. And if he's solid and he can go out there and back 300 and, and be athletic, why not? What, what's to stop him from, from retiring? And, but he's got to go out there and bat 300 and well, be athletic and make it happen. Yeah, just like, just, like, just like everyone was like, oh, you're undersized. You won't make it to the NFL. You'll never win a Super Bowl. Check, 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 check. Fuck all you people. Watch me go win a fucking pair. Wait, wait. And a championship. So are you telling me that defense wasn't what got them where they got I'm not them. saying that. I'm saying right. that the guy won a Super Bowl. It's off of his goals. Right. It's off of his goals. Right. Right. All right, we have a very small amount of time left, and we are going to use that. Yeah, that's the.
Um, we're going to use that to raise our beer to somebody we love, pour a beer box. out to somebody we hate, spout off about something political. It doesn't matter. It's your couple of minutes to make a difference in some pathetically stupid way. And this is getting very close for comfort. Ah. <laughs> anyway. Like the box grab me. We're going to uh, start it all off here with uh, <laughs> Brett Finnegan. And we're just going to roll right down the table from there. Oh, Brett. I'm actually going to raise my beer to the National Basketball Association for telling LeBron James you can't wear a black mask because he's got yeah. a broken nose. Why? Why can't he be Batman? It's not a fucking comic book. It's your fucking job. Wear the the clear mask like everybody else. There's no rule about it. Actually, they apparently the NBA doesn't want you to do it. There's no rule. They just asked him not to because he looks like a villain. Well, he he is a villain. It's fitting. It's perfect. So I I like that rule. I like how they stepped down. And said, I like hey, the car. You can't do. You can't do that. New commissioner. All right. I like it. You, looks LeBron like, uh, James. I'm going to oh, raise... Yeah, uh, everybody's like, oh, yeah, LeBron can do it's it. It's like sure. David Stern and shit and out really Alan Goldblum yeah, or whatever the fuck Yeah, he wore black, LeBron. Nobody else can, but you can. Fuck off. He thinks he's special. How many, how many times have you seen Black Mask out there? Never. Exactly. Maybe because the player never just picked one up and put it on. Maybe he was like, oh, cool. I'm going to wear a black one. Spencer Hawes breaks his nose and wears a black mask. And then he'd look like Batman. That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's my reason. Congratulations. Nice. I'm going to raise my beer to the Canon Company for producing a very cool uh, beautiful camera that I just got. It's beautiful. And I did a lot of research and there's a lot of stuff out there. But I, they do something really well with color. Uh, Dale, actually the camera that we usually use is a Canon camera and it, it, that thing's awesome too. So, oh, um, as you're raising it, change the battery pack. We're good. Let's step it up though. Alright, got to do quick. So that's my raising. Go ahead. I'm going to pour my, my beer out to my $3,000 camera that is now obsolete. <laughs> <laughs> to Mike's new high def no tape needed camera. Uh, mine's now a dinosaur and will be for sale on eBay. So if you'd like to own the camera that filmed the first hundred shows of Game Day Battle, <laughs> <laughs> I, can make, <laughs> I can make that happen for you for twenty four ninety nine. Do I dare you to put that on eBay and say that? <laughs> uh, I'd also like to raise my beer to uh, just just sports gambling. Period. <laughs> Uh, some may say that I'm addicted. Uh, I say no. We'd all say you're. Addicted. I say it's only a problem if you're losing. You know, it's all about how you look at it. One team's going to win or they're not. The score's going to go over or it's not. So you got four possibilities. Two of those are going to hit. That's better odds than any stock market you can get. And as long as you play your bet smart and don't bet money you don't have, you can't get in any trouble. It's it's just like the stock market. I make a daily investment, and I'm either going up a little or I'm losing a little. And lately I've been going up a lot. So nice. let's hope I can keep killing the NBA. And uh, sorry, book. Sorry, not sorry. Nice. Yeah. And Dale's taking us all of your stakes after this. Yeah. Over this way, so. <laughs> sorry, Ramon. Yeah. Anyway, guys, uh, before we run out of juice here, here so uh, battle on. Battle on, guys. Battle on. See you next time, bro. Cool, he bought a new house. I don't know how it is. Seriously, it might be time for my daughter to f